Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today I want to talk to you about ginseng. No, I'm not uh, hawking any kind of herbal supplements. Uh, and as a matter of fact, my background's a little misleading because did you know one of the world's largest sources of high quality ginseng is none other than Marathon, Wisconsin? You might say, wow, that's kind of interesting, Dan, but what the heck does that have to do with comics? Well, we'll find out today as we talk about Ginseng Roots, the new comic by uh, uh, indie creator Craig Thompson, uh, best known for blankets. We'll talk about his latest work in serialized form and how he's eschewed the graphic novel in favor of the floppy. Let's talk about Ginseng Roots today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm, I'm Dan Shaheen. Today we're going to talk about Wisconsin. Yeah, we are going to talk about Wisconsin, but we're going to talk specifically about Ginseng Roots by Craig Thompson. We're going to uh, look a little bit at issue one and issue number two. Uh, who's Craig Thompson? Craig Thompson is probably best known for a graphic novel called Blankets. Uh, he originally broke out on the scene way back in, in the either late 90s or early 2000s with a book called Goodbye Chunky Rice, uh, a, a really like emotional book with a really cute turtle character that people really liked. But then he poured years of his life into this work, Blankets, a giant graphic novel. It's a Bible, like a size, thick like a Bible, all about his life and how he was raised in a super religious family in Wisconsin and how he turned away from religion. It's very deep, very heavy. He invested like a decade of his life in that. He followed that up with another book that took him like another decade to do called Habibi. Less well-known, probably less, um, maybe not as successful. Uh, he's done some other uh, graphic novels too in recent years, but he came to the conclusion that he didn't want to work on uh, these to put 10 years of his life in a hole working on a graphic novel. He wanted to get feedback. So he's putting his this work out as a serialized comic. We've got two issues so far. I picked these up at a, a, a wonderful, wonderful comic book store that I uh, went to in Los Angeles on a business trip last week called Collector's Paradise. This is Collector's Paradise number three, I think, in North Hollywood. And man, do they have their act together as far as having a great selection of mainstream comics, but also really cool indie stuff that I I, I don't see in a lot of other places. Uh, the owner, Ed Greenberg, uh, told me that uh, this book is not available from Diamond Comics. You can subscribe to it directly from the publisher, Uncivilized Comics, uh, and get a subscription. It'll come with like a little slipcase box, or you can look for it it those comic book stores that really care about this kind of stuff and um, and carry uh, make make a point to stock not just indie stuff but stuff that you can't get uh, through Diamond Comics, the the main distributor of uh, Marvel and DC Comics. So uh, let's take a look at this book. But wait, let's. Why are we sitting here in the ginseng field when we should be deep in the million dollar comics? <laughs> And uh, here we are. So, uh, these book, this book is not full color, but it's not black and white. It's uh, uh, it's it's uh, black and white with spot red color. So it's black and white and red all over, like the old joke, right? Like a blushing zebra, or a, a, a or a newspaper. Um, this is just beautiful stuff, right? The 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 comic. I'm not. I'm definitely not gonna. Le leaf through the entire thing but i am going to show just some of the uh, the stuff that we're dealing with because what this is is a comic about the uh the author's life craig thompson grew up working as a a working poor kid in a rural community in wisconsin marathon wisconsin happens to be the u.s capital of ginseng farming and so they for a couple of bucks an hour they would pick ginseng at these ginseng farms and and Craig would and his brother would use that money to buy comics. And here he's looking at all the comics he loved as a kid. And this just tells me 
that this guy is exactly like my age, a contemporary, because we see Usagi and Gru and Casper, the Tick, right? Calvin and Hobbes. I think that's like from Nausicaa. And, and then little ginseng dude here that he's created. And, and, and you can just see the, the, the love and care that goes into this. I mean, he's producing these on a bi-monthly basis. This is a 32-page comic book. Um, and so he's dedicated, he's, he's really honed in his craft. He's, he's put in his decade, decades now in comics. He's got his 10,000 plus hours. And I would venture to say Craig Thompson is now, um, you know, a master of the comics medium, but he's that other end of the spectrum of the comics medium, right? Comics are great. People think at showing like action and adventure and science fiction and, and super heroics and what have you. These are the people that misunderstand the difference between a genre and a medium, right? Because comics are great at, uh, at, at showing genres. The medium of comics is great w with multiple genres. So it's really great with superheroes and action and science fiction and everything else. Um, but it also has unique qualities that make it stated super suited to very personal topics, but also one of my favorites is like informational comics, comics that teach you something, but are still super entertaining to read and don't just read like a like a brochure or an airplane like instruction manual. These, this is where someone walks the fine art of, of comics, uh, you know, as a communication medium. And I just eat this stuff up. Craig Thompson is awesome at it, right? Because you get the cartooniness of, of stuff like this, mixed in with the meticulously researched uh, stuff about f this specific type of farming, right? This is all very real stuff, right? And, and, and as well as being able to, you know, do stuff like this, illustrate and teach you a little bit about ginseng because that this book is about, not just about ginseng, it's a fascinating, herb and plant unto itself with a rich history and it's going to go into that in the course of this 12 issue series maybe 12 issues um but it's also about his roots as in the ginseng farming community and his family and how that affected him and his brother and his sister who if you read blankets you didn't even know he has a sister we learn in the in this comic so we're going to learn a lot more about craig thompson as a person um and we're going to learn about the the history of the um spread of ginseng and the commerce you know these these chinese ginseng traders every year would travel to marathon wisconsin to like haggle and negotiate directly with the farmers for this stuff so we've got a lot of really cool looking stuff this is not an easy thing these are not easy things to draw and they are especially not easy to draw as comics that are so readable and, and beautiful as this. I cannot stress enough how great the cartooning is here. You you know, if you're strictly a superhero fan, you've probably already tuned out and are not watching this, but in, in case you are, this is where we can see that like the medium of comics is capable of so much. And I'm not one to disparage superhero comics. Obviously, I re read them every week and I review them all the time and I've read them my entire life. There have been times in my life <clears throat> where I've moved away from them and was strictly into this sort of arty stuff and I sort of thought, mm, you know, that stuff is for kids or whatever. I'm too cool for that. And what I've come to realize is that, like, the beauty of comics is the power of the medium. It's not the single genre of superheroes or crime or humor or whatever. It's its ability like cinema to encompass all of those things and more and and have specific um mechanics to the medium that uh, are unique to comics and and craig thompson knows this and it and uses every trick in the cartoonist handbook and then some to do this now this is this is an auteur comic. It's all done by Thompson. Everything, all every single bit, um, except uh, each one has a little backup story that's a sort of a jam comic with him and his brother, uh, John Phil Thompson. Um, but 
look at everything, including like the house ads in the back. Everything has the hand done mark of quality. Everything is drawn by hand. I'd venture to say, except maybe this barcode. Um, he does all the production work. These thing, this is not easy to pull off, you know. And and then using um, black and white ink, and then gray tones, and this other third ink color, third plate required in printing to get the to get the red. Um, it's not just haphazardly done. If you look at these pages and you look at just the way the tones are used to create layers and, and sort of uh, depth uh, is really not easy to pull off. Stuff like this here with the maps and the, the, the red on top of the black and white, this stuff is super attractive and so readable. It feels so good in the hand. This is a little bit smaller than a normal size comic, but this is the joy that I get in reading a single comic. And then what we're reading about is we're, we're getting a history of, of ginseng itself mixed in with uh, Craig's interactions with his current day family and his pr memories of farming. If that's not your kind of thing, if you don't read those kind of books or those kind of, uh, you know, histories, personal histories, or are interested in the history of food or... Uh, 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 or business or those kind of things. If you don't read that kind of nonfiction, this might not be your thing. Um, but if you haven't tried it, I'd say you're doing yourself a disservice. If you can find this, you want to pick up a copy of, of Ginseng Roots and you can get them directly from Uncivilized. You can go to their website and order this and pick these up. What I also like... Um, in, in the backup pieces, besides the extra comics, um, there's there's like a letters column. And in the first one, of course, there's no letters because it's the first issue, but he talks about like how he came up with the idea to do this. And one of the things I really liked was he talked about, like I said, how he didn't want to put himself in a hole for another 10 years and make a gigantic graphic novel. He's finding this graphic novel movement while there's some great stuff. A lot of this kind of like pretentious overwrought, overthought, over, uh, overly, um, you know, it takes too long to put this stuff out, man. The masters of comics would put this stuff out month after month. So the least he can do is do it, put out a bi-monthly book. That's, uh, that's, that's fun to read, right? So the, the point being that, uh, this is a, a, a lovely, like a artifact to hold in the hand it will eventually be collected into a graphic novel without all the backup stuff and you're gonna have to wait who knows two years right if it's 12 issues coming out bi-monthly if he hits hits that schedule um this is where reading single comics right i've just come to realize it's the best way to support the industry of comics right to support the comic shops because there's an urgency to get in there week after week, month after month, and get the new stuff. But also, you're I'm years ahead of the people that are waiting to read this in graphic novel form. I'll always have these single issues. I can sell them since I'm not into digital comics. I can trade them. I can sell them. I can gift them to other people. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is Craig Thompson, one of the things he talks about is that you know, when he was researching this book, he came across a couple of books. Like one thing that inspired him was like uh, uh, Michael Pollan's writings, like the Botany of Desire. Um, books about food and about plants and about botany really interest him. And so in researching this, he found a couple of books, Ginseng Dreams and Ginseng the Divine Root. Um, and he... he he plugs them here in the back because he goes, man, I, I started reading these books and I go, they're telling the whole story, including the story of my hometown, Mar Marathon, Wisconsin. Like, this is a big deal and it's like well known for ginseng and it's really interesting. He goes, oh man, I almost decided oh, to just stop and not do this. But then he realized that what he brought to it was, one, he's bringing it to comics form. Two, he's bringing his own unique perspective having grown up there and actually not being an outsider but being an insider and seeing it from there 
and 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 that he's bringing his own perspective to it and that's just as important as the story that he's telling is how he tells it and bringing it to the medium of comics is something that you know only he could do somebody else might try it like this is the kind of thing where you sometimes see graphic novels on the shelf and it might be like a history of something it might even be like a, a food one and you read it and it's it's okay but it just reads sort of like an illustrated book a lot of text captions it's not great comics it's it's someone who's not a master of comic the comics medium like craig thompson is so i've gone on a long time if you're watching this you either like this kind of comic or uh hey you you, you like this kind of show and i want to thank you for supporting this show for watching if you haven't already please subscribe we're almost to 500 subscribers and I'm going to be so excited when we get there. I don't I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to contain myself. Um, I, thank you for subscribing and liking and especially commenting below. If, if you've even seen this comic in your comic shop, I want to know. Call it out where you saw it so that we can call out the, uh, the shops that are taking the time to look for stuff beyond what they're seeing every month in the Diamond Previews. Right, there's not many shops that do, and Collector's Paradise is one of them. I want to thank them again. Uh, they're also uh, the last remaining comic shop out there I, that I know of that uses my open source comic book running software and he, uh, that I wrote back when I had a store. He told me, the owner of this store told me that the programmer curses my name for my lack of comments in the code and, uh, and, and, and uh, overall craziness that i learned while i wrote that stuff anyway i'm digressing but thanks for watching and uh, uh please come on back and and subscribe leave some comments and we'll see you next time